Okay. Well, hello, Movie Z Movers. Welcome to Movie Z Yoga with Kathy. Today is Saturday, December 2nd, 2023, or whatever day you're watching this video. So today's focus is going to be on hips, a little bit of hips, a little bit of legs, a little bit of core, a little bit of stretching, our regular warm-ups. For props, you're going to need your trusty chair, just for the first part. Um, a block, we're going to do a supported bridge and possibly also stand on it and swing the leg for the psoas and a strap for the leg stretch. So um, we're going to start in our usual manner with this seven minute supine rest. So legs on a chair or couch or something to support. You can also do legs up a wall, but legs on a chair or couch where your lower leg is parallel to the floor is how you put your lower back in traction. Um, we're gonna be here for seven minutes. So what you wanna do once you get into position is just relax and breathe normally. Bring yourself, your awareness into your yoga space. Uh, your hips are at neutral, so make sure you have that natural curve in your back. Your lower legs should be parallel to the floor. So if you have longer legs than I do, you might want to put support under them. So again, we're going to be here for seven minutes. Two.
Okay, time's up. Stay where you are. If you choose, you can roll your tongue under the roof of your mouth to tighten your, your chin. And we're going to move our head from right to left about six times, cervical rotation. At your own pace, do it slowly, though. <clears throat> okay, finish up. The next thing we're going to do is vagus nerve reset. We're all familiar with this. We just, our head is facing forward and it doesn't move. You just want to move your eyes. You start by moving your eyes to the right. Your eyes can be open or closed. And you wait for a reaction, a sigh, swallow, yawn, or gulp. We're trying to activate the vagus nerve. And then give it a minute. If you haven't activated that yet and had some kind of reaction. And then bring your eyes forward again. And then again, without moving your head, your eyes go to the left. And again, wait for that size, swallow, yawn, or go. Activating the vagus nerve. And now I'd like you to do it two times on each side without my cueing at your own pace. I'll give you a couple of minutes. Okay, finish up. The next thing we're doing is head ramping. Now you can leave your head, <laughs> head support, where whatever you have underneath it is fine. Or you can put a sponge ball, a set of therapy balls, or whatever you want behind your head. I like the sponge ball, it just gives me more give. What we're doing is we are moving the back of our neck away from the rest of our body. You can do this sitting up. You can do it lying down. We want to reverse text neck. We're always looking down at whatever, a book, our devices, our knitting, whatever. 
and we want to reverse that. So it's the back of your neck, your occipital ridge, the space between your ears runs along your hairline away from the rest of the body. So we're going to do this three times. We press and hold and then release. So press, hold, and release. And again, press, hold. Notice that your chin comes along for the ride, but it's not moving, making the movement. It's the back of your neck. And release. And then one last time, press, hold, and release. This is a good thing to do every day. You can do it pretty much anytime, anywhere, sitting in a stoplight. When you're in traffic. <laughs> okay. The uh, breathing exercise we're going to do today is Veloma breathing. Veloma breathing is just a type of controlled breathing where you take in sips of air, as Via puts it. Um, what you want to do is you inhale a third of your capacity, your lung capacity, and then pause, and then inhale another third, and then pause, and then inhale to full capacity, a short pause, and then a normal exhale. So let's let's do that. Inhale, pause, inhale, pause, inhale, pause, and exhale. The purpose of these breathing exercises and these warm-ups is to get our bodies, our nerves set for yoga. So we're going to do this two more times. So inhale, pause, inhale, pause, inhale, pause, exhale. And one last time. Inhale, pause, inhale, pause, inhale, pause, exhale. Good deal. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do is vacuum. You can leave your legs on a chair if you choose, or you can move away from your chair or couch or move your chair away. And as far as your position, you can be in any position that is most comfortable for you. Legs on a chair, legs bent, legs extended. I personally like legs extended, but that's me. <laughs> so the idea of the vacuum is we're trying to strengthen our pelvic floor. So what we're going to do is take a normal inhale and then exhale everything out of our lungs. And with our lungs empty, we create a vacuum. We press our lower back into the floor, press our belly button down and create a vacuum in the pelvic area and hold it for the count of 10 and then release. So let's go ahead and do that. We do a normal inhale through the nose and then exhale everything out of your lungs and hold it out. Create your vacuum. Press your belly button down towards the floor. Flatten your back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Release, inhale, give yourself a minute to get your breath back. This is another good thing you can do every day, strengthens the pelvic floor. Just good to do in general. 
So we're going to do this two more times. So a normal inhale through the nose, and then exhale through the mouth or the nose or both. Everything out, 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 out. Hold it out. Create that vacuum. Hold that vacuum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Release. Inhale. Get your breath back. Give yourself a couple of breaths to get your breath back. And we're going to do this one more time. Normal inhale through the nose. And then exhale everything out of your lungs. Empty your lungs. Create your vacuum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Release. All right. Good, good job, guys. I need to make a quick note here. Just bear with me. All right, stay where you are. We're going to do windshield wipers. Wake up our hips a little bit. So knees bent, feet on the floor, about hip width apart. And let's start slow and just go maybe a third of the way, not all the way down to the floor yet. We're just warming up. Just slowly back and forth. You know, I may be awake up here, but my hips are not awake down there yet. <laughs> so just gently waking them up a little. And then if you feel good about it, you can maybe go a little bit further. Notice my... my Feet are coming a little bit off the floor. Still not all the way. Still just waking up. If you're still good with the, the smaller movement, fine, go with that. Whatever it takes. It may take, you know, different than somebody else, length of time to get all the warm, all the way warmed up. You know, if you feel comfortable doing this, you can widen your legs, maybe as wide as your mat. And again, start slow. Don't go all the way down to the floor at once or right away. Start slow, just kind <clears> of <throat> be easy on yourself. This isn't a race or contest. You know, and if you feel comfortable, you can go a little bit further. Everybody's different. So be aware of how you're feeling about this. And be kind to yourself. Very often we think we should do more than we do, and we need to listen to our bodies. So depending on how you feel, you may want to come all the way to the floor, in which case your hips can come up. Or you may not. It's up to you. This is your time, so again, I and I have to remind myself of this. Be kind to your body. It's the only one you've got. <laughs> okay. I think that's enough of that.
Good job. Good job. Now we're going to do um, what I call leg raises. So your feet are now about hip width apart again, knees bent. And we're going to go up with the right leg and then up with the left leg. And then here's a twist. We're going to go up with both legs. So up with the right, keeping your knee bent the way it was. Up with the left. Again, keeping your knee in the same angle. And then up with both. Tabletop and then back down. So up with the right. Up with the left. Up with both. So we're getting a little ab action in here, right off the bat. With the right, up with the left, up with both. One more time, up with the right, up with the left, up with both. All right, good job. Okay, the third, I was, I was trying to figure out what my note meant. The third is, in this triplet, is your legs are hip width apart, knees are bent, and then we have bent knee, knee drops. Down to the right, down to the left. Again, you only want to come down as comfortable as it is for you. It may only be this far, and that's fine. Listen to your body. Down to the left, down to the right. Try to keep your feet where they are. And you may find you can drop further on one side than the other. That's normal. I can drop further on the right for some reason. So if you notice, we're moving our hips in different directions here. So drop on the right and drop on the left. The rest of your body is stationary. You're just moving your legs. So your hips, keep them where they are. They're not engaging, just the legs. Okay, I think that's enough of that. Let's come up to a sitting position. Take your time. We're gonna do our regular stretches that we do for warm up. Starting with the side bend. So you can sit in whatever position works for you, although cross-legged works best in this position. Start on the side, slide your hand along the mat. The other arm comes up and over. Lean over as far as you can, keeping both sits bones on the, on the mat. And be aware of where you're feeling this. I'm feeling this all up my side body, all the way from my hip, all the way up here. Yeah, it feels good. Now that right, that upper arm, lower it until it's parallel to the floor. That creates a different kind of a stretch. You might feel it under your arm and down your back, the latissimus dorsi, dorsi. I hold that for just a few seconds because I was off on my timing. <laughs> and arm up, torso up. Okay. Now other side, hand along the mat, 
upper arm comes up and over. Both sits bones on the floor. Just be aware of where you're feeling this. This always feels so good to do this. And now lower that upper arm till it's parallel to the floor. Reach for that corner. Reach, reach, reach. Wiggle those fingers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Arm up. Torso up. And let's just switch our legs just because. And now we're going to do the rotation that we normally do, but we're going to do just a little bit differently. So, <clears throat> excuse me, raise your arms to your side. And now up above, rotate to the right, just as far as is comfortable. Lower your arms. Raise them up again above your head, or actually 45 degree angle, excuse me. Rotate to the front, rotate to the left and then arms down. And you can place them wherever you feel most comfortable, on your leg, behind you, arms up, rotate forward, rotate to the right, arms down, arms up, rotate forward, rotate to the left, Arms down. Okay, arms up. Rotate forward. Rotate to the right. Arms down. Arms up. Rotate forward. That's it. Good job. It's just a different way of doing the rotation we normally do. And then for our third in this triplet, again, if you want, you can switch your legs. You don't have to. We're going to have arms straight out. You can have palms up, palms down, doesn't matter, or palms forward. And we're just going to lean like somebody's gently pulling your wrist and then lean to the other side. You're going to keep your back straight, your shoulders relaxed. Your arms out. Somebody's gently got your wrist over here, and they're gently pulling you towards them. And then you've got somebody on this side, and they're gently pulling you towards them. So we're going from side to side. Keeping our back straight. And just back and forth. Okay. I think that's enough of that. Let's just kind of shake your arms out. You can roll your shoulders if you want. Um, okay, now we're going to do some standing. So I need to set up real quick. So bear with me. We're going to do standing on one foot. So you will want to be standing next to something, a wall or your chair or something for support. So in this triplet, what we're going to do is, you don't need to see my face. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do all the exercises on one side, and then we'll do all the exercises on the other side. So you can start on whichever side's comfortable for you. 
We're going to be standing on one foot. Now, when you raise your foot, you can put it anywhere you want. You can put it in front. You can hook it on your, on your heel and back. You can have it out. You can wave it in the air. You can have it behind you. Some people find this easier. You can have it anywhere you want. The idea, though, is to try to balance on the other foot. And one of the tricks to that is to, you want to focus on something across the room. You don't need to be looking at the computer. Look at something that's eye level and focus on that. I have found that works for me really well. So we're going to do 30 seconds. I can find the right timer. There it is. Okay, ready? Go. 30 seconds. Arms can be wherever you want. Leg can be as high as you want. The idea is just to focus. Hold it. There we go. There we go. Good job. It's hard for me to talk and do it at the same time. So, okay, the second thing is <laughs> um, okay, and the second thing, you're standing in good posture. Your leg is up like this. You may want to hold on to your chair for this one. Your leg is up in front, and we're going to move it to the side and to the front, and to the side and to the front. I got this from Terry Via, and she said she calls it gate open, gate closed. Gate open, gate closed. It's a good movement for the hip. So again, it's a 30 sec 30 second movement. So here we go. Gate open, gate closed. <laughs> gate open, gate closed. But it's a rotation in the hip. So you may feel it right on, I'm feeling it right on top of my joint between my thigh and my torso here. So you can move as fast as you choose or as slow. And you may not be able to come out as far, just whatever works for you. So there's that. That was 30 seconds. And the third one in this triplet is the leg swing. So this is where your block comes in. You can have it be a thick block or a thinner block. For me, a thick block works. And we put our foot on top of it, and we're just swinging our leg. This is as the psoas right here is what we're working. So we're going to do that for 30 seconds. I recommend hanging on to the chair or the wall. And you just let your foot dangle. And Your leg is the only thing moving. Should feel it right in the joint. There we go, 30 seconds. Now we'll do the other side. I need to move a little bit. Okay, so we're going to start by standing on one foot, and again, your leg can be wherever you want it to be. 30 seconds. So keep that focus. You need to hold on to something 
don't be ashamed to, uh, but just keep that focus. There we go, 30 seconds. I practice when I'm in my kitchen watching my microwave. And then now we're gonna do the gate open, gate closed with the knee. So your knee is up. Again, 30 seconds. Your knee is up. So gate open, gate closed. Or I don't know, maybe this is closed and this is open. <laughs> But all you're moving is your leg back and forth. And this is also good for balance because you are on one foot. We can do this lying down, but I like this one because we're actually exercising the other leg as well. It's supporting us. And 30 seconds goes by really fast. That's it. Now we're gonna do the leg swing. So foot on the brick. Oops, there we go. And just, you don't have to do this fast, just gently. And I don't know, I'm swinging it maybe, maybe two feet, a foot forward, a foot back. It's different for everyone, my legs are short. But if you're out walking and your hips are stiff, I do this on a curb sometimes. If my hips are stiff, I'll stand on the curb and do this. But I have to hang on to something, like a tree or something. Okay, there we go. And now that we are standing, let's go ahead and do our, our wall stuff that we normally do. I'm going to see if I can keep my computer here and do that. So here we are with our back to a wall. We're going to do the back bend. So our arms are going to come up, elbows by our head and palms on the wall. We're going to hold that for 40 seconds. So. Here we go, up, over, keep your back straight, uh, your hips are back, your chest is extended, keep your elbows as close to your head as possible, if you have shoulder issues you may not be able to do that, that's okay, as much of your palms on the wall as possible. This is a bone building exercise. It's good for our bones. That's why we hold it. There we go. Come on down. Okay, I, I wasn't sure what I had next. Spine twist at the wall. So we're gonna start on the right, right foot forward, Left foot back, readjust a little, there we go. Right foot forward, left foot back, elbows at your waist, palms, rotate, put them on the wall, 40 seconds. Again with the bone building. I try to do something like this every day, I have osteopenia, precursor to osteoporosis. And I'm trying to do everything right. Sometimes it's just hereditary. Now the other side, so left side at the wall, left foot forward, right foot back, elbows at your waist, palms up. 
Rotate towards the wall, palms on the wall. Begin with the 40 second hold. Make sure your back is straight, your shoulders are relaxed. Oh, 40 seconds. Okay, now we're going to, uh, we've done this before. We're going to do the march at the wall. And the reason I say it's at the wall, because you want to hang on to something while you're doing this. This march is a knees up. So you want to bring your knees up as much as you can. You can go slowly or you can go faster. It's your own pace. But the idea is to bring your knees at least up as high as your waist. We're gonna do this for a full minute. So pace yourself. And here we go. So this is good for not only your hips, your abs, your legs. This is a very good, but you do wanna pace yourself. In a minute, it's not that long when you think about it. You know, you just think about, oh, yes, I'm just walking along. <laughs> walking along. This is a silly walk. You're in a Monty Python, silly walks. This is so good for everything. Your, your butt muscles, your legs. 10 seconds. those knees up. All right. Good job. Okay, back to the mat. I have to rearrange real quick. Uh, we're going to be lying down and doing the leg stretch, just so you know. So you might want to get out your strap. And if you can, put your foot against a wall. I don't have a whole lot of wall to work with, so. Okay. So you can start with whichever foot you choose, but okay, you can't see me. I'm gonna have my left foot against the wall. So Take your right foot and put the strap around it. Now, when you have the strap like this, make sure your shoulders are relaxed. Your elbows are on the floor. We're not doing an arm thing. This is a leg thing. So we're gonna pull it straight back. Your knee can be bent. Uh, the idea is we're stretching the hamstring, which is the back of the thigh. We're going to hold this for 40 seconds. So just come back as much as is comfortable. You may feel that pull on that hamstring. That's good. This is a very good hamstring stretch. And I don't know about you, mine get really tight sometimes.
Okay. Now take this strap in both straps in your right hand and your leg goes off to the right. Now it just go as far as is comfortable for you. You don't need to bring it all the way to the floor. Just if it's this far and that's as far as you can go, then th that's fine. Go with it. But just bring it as far over as you can. And if you'll notice, this stretches the inside of the hamstring. Because I can feel it from the inside of my thigh, upper, all the way down to the inside of my knee. There we go. That's it. Now bring it up and put the, both straps in your left hand. Now this time your foot on the wall is going to rotate so the side of the foot is on the floor and the toes are pointing to the left. Um, your hips, your right hip's going to come up and your leg's going to come over as far as is comfortable. Now you have choices here. You can bring your shoulder and your arm with it. And you can have something on that side to rest on, your couch, your chair. Or you can extend your arm to the back, keep your shoulder on the floor, get a twist in there. It's up to you. And that's that. So now the other leg. I find switching up in the air is easiest. Whatever works for you. And the other foot is on the wall. Now, I forgot to mention, but it's on the wall like you're standing on the wall. Your toes are pointed towards the ceiling. So now we're going to do the same thing on this side. Start by relaxing your shoulders. Your elbows are on the floor. And you're gently pulling back on your leg, which is either straight or slightly bent, whichever works for you. Get that hamstring stretch in there. Those feels so good because they get tight. Okay. That's 40 seconds. So now take both straps in your left hand. And the leg goes over to the left, just as far as is comfortable. You may not be able to go all the way to the floor. That's fine. Everybody is different. If you don't go all the way down, try to find something to rest your leg on if you can. So we're stretching the inside of the thigh now. And your right hip stays on the floor. Okay, 40 seconds, that's it. Now, bring that leg up, put both straps in your right hand, you're going to rotate your foot on the wall, and you're going to shift your hips just a little. The leg comes all the way over, it's a crossover. Again, you've got your choice with your arm, you can have it behind you for a twist, or you can bring it with the leg. Your hip's going to come up. You're on your side, basically. That's a different kind of a twist. And there we go. Good job, guys. All right, you're done with your strap. Okay, now I'm going to show you another move that I really like for stretching. This is going to stretch the front of your thigh, the quad. So we're going to be side lying. 
Now you can either let me move this one. I need a producer in here to help me. <laughs> okay. So you can either be on your elbow, and if you are, make sure your shoulders relax, or you can be on your side with a support under your head. Either way that works for you. I'm going to demonstrate this on my elbow. So this is a very easily, it's very easy to go like this when you're when you're in this position, but make sure your head is up, your shoulders relaxed, your knees are bent. So the movement is your upper leg comes forward. You can help it along with your arm. In fact, I recommend you do. And then it goes behind you. And while it goes behind you, you want to slide your hand down to the ankle and gently pull it behind you. You'll feel a stretch in your quad as you do that. And then forward, and then back. Oh, yeah, that stretch in that quad really feels good. And then forward. and back. Make sure you keep your knee level or your leg level with the ground. It's not up here. It's not down there. It's level with the ground. You get the best stretch that way and it doesn't really hurt your hip. And then one more. Forward. And then back. I like this quad stretch. So my quads get tight too. Okay, so let's do the other side. So again, if you're on your elbow, make sure that your elbow's relaxed, your head is up, you're not slouching, <laughs> legs are bent, hips are stacked. So upper leg comes up. I'm hooking my elbow around it. You can do it in whichever way. If you'd rather have your hand on the outside, you can do that. I just like doing it this way. And then you slide your hand down to your ankle or the top of your foot and gently pull it back, keeping it, notice my leg is even with the floor. And feel that stretch, yes. And then forward and back. Oh, yeah. Forward And then one more forward. Try to bring your heel towards your hip if you can. Okay. Good job. Okay, let's get ready for Yoga Nidra. Because time's up. Time flies when you're having fun. Find a comfortable position that works for you. You might want to cover your eyes with a cloth. Maybe cover yourself with a blanket if it's cool. Make sure you are either warm enough or cool enough, as the case may be. <clears throat> I'm going to lead you through a 61-point guided meditation, which works on your nervous system to balance your energies. I want you to bring your attention to the points as I mentioned them without moving any part of your body. 
Let's start with your breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Observe your abdomen as it rises and falls with the gentle flow of your breath. Now bring your awareness to the center of your eyebrows, center of your throat, right shoulder, elbow, wrist, right thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, right wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, left shoulder, elbow, left thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, left wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, spiritual heart center, right side of your chest, heart center, left side of your chest, heart center, navel center, center of your pelvis, right hip, knee, ankle, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, right ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, left hip, knee, ankle, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, left ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, navel center, spiritual heart center, center of your throat, center of your eyebrows. This concludes the 61 point guided meditation. Begin to wiggle and stretch. Stretch your arms out above your head. Stretch your legs out if they're bent. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Rotate your wrists and your ankles. First one way, then the other. Stretch one side and then the other. Now take your right knee and hold it to your chest. Thank you, knee, for everything you do. Straighten that leg out. Take your left knee, hold it to your chest. Straighten that leg out. After thanking your knee for everything it does. <laughs> now bring up both knees and hold them to your chest while you slowly and gently rock back and forth, feeling that massage on your lower back and your back organs. Feels good. And when you're ready, go ahead and roll towards the camera, losing your, using your lower arm as support for your head. We're going to take our gratitude minute. Just take a minute and be grateful for yourself for showing up today and doing something good for you. And think about things you're grateful for. I'm grateful for you guys. I'm grateful to Via for showing me the way. If you've ever seen The Mandalorian, this is the way. Anyway, just 
I, I always like to take a minute in the morning and count my blessings. Things I'm grateful for. I'm grateful I can move. I know many people who can't. When you're ready, come on up to a sitting position. I'm gonna remove my spotlight. You might want to unmute yourself. Hands to your heart. We didn't do much shoulders, but let's do a press here. Just so we can say we did something. <laughs> and then loosen it up. Make it gentle. I want to thank you for joining me today, and I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Rest of your weekend. So let's end the class by saying to each other, Namaste. 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 Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, right. Kathy. Yes. Thank you. Everybody have a good weekend. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.